Dr. Manchanda, we see a lot of heart failure these days because of a rising prevalence of obesity, metabolic syndrome, people are living longer, having hypertension, diabetes mellitus, and they are doing a lot of interventions, especially coronary interventions or the pacemakers. So we see a lot of diastolic heart failure as well as systolic heart failure. And these patients have to be very meticulously managed, both by non-pharmacological methods and pharmacological methods. And of course, some patients may need a surgical or a mechanical intervention also. My main question to you is, what are the non-pharmacological methods by which we can help these patients so that they don't go into a recurrent or a repeated heart failure, a diastolic more these days as compared to systolic? Dr. Manchanda. Yes. Dr. Chopra, you are very right. The incidence of heart failure is not coming down. This is one disease which is increasing in spite of all the preventive and therapeutic. And this is because we are doing a lot of interventions, but the end stage of most of them is heart failure. And heart failure is a very bad prognosis. It can be managed both without drugs and with drugs. Without drugs are very important non-pharmacological methods. The first thing is you have to decrease the salt intake of these patients because salt causes more retention of fluid and all that thing. I also advise all these patients that they should take their weight every day because they have to pass a lot of urine etc and uh, the weight record tells us how much uh, diuresis they are doing so uh, the diet is very important low salt diet and if they are having disease uh, the if they are having a disease like coronary artery you have to take the other precautions also the second thing you have to do is uh, exercise it may look paradoxical but it has been clearly shown that uh, gradually increasing exercise reduces the incidence of heart failure. If they are having other risk factors, like if they are smoking, if they are overweight, they should uh, stop smoking, they should uh, uh, cause the uh, uh, reduction. There are uh, some studies on yoga meditation also, which has been shown that uh, meditation can uh, improve the ejection fraction and uh, reduce the incidence of uh, uh, heart failure and also these are the non-pharmacological methods which can be extremely useful. I would suggest that the weight record every day is a very important parameter which tells them whether they are improving or not. If the weight increases this means fluid is retained more. About the drug treatment, what are your words? Well. Uh, there are, as you said, two types of heart failure. One is uh, systolic heart failure. For that, the treatment is quite advanced and there have been several advances. For diastolic heart failure, still we do not have uh, enough drugs. Uh, for systolic heart failure, there are three drugs which have been shown to decrease the uh, mortality. And uh, these three drugs are one, ACE inhibitors or ARBs. The second are the beta blockers. And uh, the third are the some diuretics, uh, aldosterone antagonists. They all have been shown to decrease the mortality. All these patients must also give diuretics because they retain a lot of fluids, etc. So these are the drug treatment for these patients. And uh, this has saved large number of lives if the drugs are used properly. Do the statins really help in diastolic heart failure? There's a lot of words people talk of beta blockers and statins in the diastolic heart failure. Does it really help? Well, the management of heart failure is still far from satisfactory. Uh, beta blockers have been tried, but outcome studies have not shown. Calcium channel blockers have been, in some cases they do. There was a study with spironolactone also which shows. But I think the treatment of diastolic heart failure still has uh, to be evolved. So many things are being said, but we do not know much about diastolic heart failure treatment. A new drug which they use these days is neptralicin or emerinone in these patients. And there's a lot of data coming up which favorable response of neptralicin. Just uh, yes. last month we had a conference in Indore on a heart failure. People talk of this new drug. It's too early, I know. We don't have much, yes, yes. Uh, much data. But some initiation or a beginning data or pilot data is already available. Oh, sure. your views on? I think this is a drug which has been found to be extremely useful in reducing mortality in addition to the three drugs that I already mentioned. This drug has not come in, in India as yet, but I think this uh, several trials have shown that this could also decrease mortality. So I think this drug could be added to the existing armamentarium and this could reduce the uh, heart failure mortality further. We'd like to have uh, some words from you. With a lot of people using these days especially in the end-stage heart failure or in what we call as acute decomposited heart failure, ADHF. Various modalities like even they use ECMO or they use uh, uh, some kind of a dialysis in these patients and they also use some kind of devices in these patients 
when that also fail they subject some patient to a heart transplant what are your views on this yes i think if the heart failure is not controlled or is uh, resistant then there are various techniques done you see sometimes we call in our country we call these patients weekly for a dobutamine infusion they improve slightly but then uh, they are improved with a large number of devices which are available which are not really very very cheap in our country and they are usually used as bridge to transplants uh, as you said surgery is also very important certain patients of mitral stenosis or valvular narrow they will be completely cured by that the other devices which are used are the uh, uh, cardiac transplant is the final but before that one can use some left or right heart assist devices which are costly and cannot be used for a long time but heart uh, transplant is the uh, final treatment for uh, irreversible heart failure this is being done in india now many centers are doing it with a reasonable result and uh, uh, but there is a big waiting list all over the world and all uh, so far one has not been able to make a artificial heart but uh, uh uh, uh, uh the uh, uh, progression is on electrophysiological studies also sometimes can help it you see for example crt there is a pacemaker which can be used which can also help uh, resistant cases of heart failure but that can be done in certain cases sometimes okay. icd is also used with this uh, crt d it's called because most of the patients die uh, uh, of uh, sudden cardiac deaths so icd is also recommended especially if they have a myocardial infarction after 40 days if ejection fraction is low or if they are in ectopics then they should have a icd to prevent sudden death and they should have uh, crt to uh, improve the function i think the message is very clear by dr manchanda he said uh, that most of the patient of uh, heart failure with a systolic or diastolic heart failure also have some kind of a dyssynchrony maybe a interventricular dyssynchrony or intraventricular dyssynchrony or atrioventricular dyssynchrony in these are the patients who need or even a global dyssynchrony by 3d echo and these are the patients who need crt it can be crt d or crt based on the variables what we get and they have to be very meticulously followed and the data is more favorable dr manchanda also said then we have got a assist device lv assist device or many assist devices are there by which we can really improve the morbidity and the mortality in these patients and heart transplant the first heart transplant was done in delhi yes, all in institute of medical sciences yes, right. and subsequently it is in chennai many heart transplants are done now more than 500 if you see in chennai or hyderabad or many other places people are doing it now and uh, in the years to come i think this modality also need to more explored for oh, sure so that our patients are benefited especially who are young in 20s or 30s we are losing them the only problem is a donor uh, you want to give any comment on the donation of the heart is it easy practical legally ethically morally for oh, sure you see uh, the definition of uh, death was uh, by the parliament uh, when i was in all india institute about 15 years back so it's very easy and i think the message should be spread that a dying person can give life to seven people you see for example heart can be transplanted both the lungs can be transplanted of course the eyes the both the kidneys and the liver so i think this message should go and more and more people are accepting it now we have a very good arrangement in our country now that if there is a donor available there are uh, uh, very fast uh, either aeroplanes or uh, uh, the ambulances which take them uh, uh, free of traffic and delhi police and several other police uh, uh, in in chennai they could transport the heart within half an hour of uh, uh, from several miles and also i think this the progress is very good in our country for cardiac transplant so to conclude ladies and gentlemen the message is very clear heart failure menace is rising in our country the time to act is now and to create an impact globally if you want to act meticulously locally i think dr manchanda has given a very right method the non pharmacological method has to be adopted throughout in the form of a salt restriction in the form of non smoking in the form of weight reduction and of course he mentioned the role of yoga and psychological or behavioral or a relaxation techniques which cannot be surpassed they are very very important and beside that there are some drug like case inhibitors beta blockers even the arbs people are using these days and diuretics are the real hallmark of the treatment and he also mentioned about the role of a mechanical device and surgical device used for systolic and diastolic heart failure and his message was very clear that the diastolic heart failure is becoming more than systolic heart failure because of more obesity we are very grateful to you sir for giving a message and i am sure uh, with this message new ideas will emerge 
new therapies will emerge and we'll be able to help our community meticulously. The best, best strategy will be prevention. Prevention. We right. should try to prevent the diseases which cause coronary artery disease, valvular diseases and finally detect them at early stage and treat them early. Prevention so, is the best strategy. So early diagnosis, early treatment is the answer and the strategy which should be adopted as expressed by Professor Simon Chandra. Thank you very much sir Thank for you. your uh, interaction today.